Good morning, St. Andrews. Welcome to the online service where the Davis family, we have my wife, Sarah Joy, who you'll know from singing. She's just recently joined Chris's singing team. In the middle is Trouble, known as James. Say hello. Can say hello. No, <laughs> all of a sudden it's gone quiet. And I'm James's dad, or Paul, as some people call me. Um, we just we feel very privileged to have been asked to do the intro. We've decided um, <clears throat> to sing a song. Um, unfortunately, I can't sing, so Sarah's going to do the singing, and James is going to try and do percussion. We'll see how that goes. It's uh, the song is by um, one of our favourite Christian singers, um, Mr. Don Francisco. Don Francisco, yeah. anyone from the 80s will remember him. Best singer, songwriter writer of all time, if you don't know. <laughs> get on him. And this song is called I'll Never Let Go of Your Hand. I know what you've been hearing. Mm. I've seen you hide your fears. Embarrassed by your weaknesses. Afraid to let me near. I wish you knew how much I love. No matter what may happen, child, I'll never let go of your hand. I'll never let go of your hand. Don't work with children or animals. <laughs> That's what you're I apologise for my wife's voice. You couldn't properly hear James through that racket. <laughs> Please enjoy the service. Goodbye. Good morning and welcome to our online service. So glad that you can join us this morning. And at the same time as this service goes out on Sunday morning, there'll be a group of us gathering in church. So wherever you are in your home or wherever, we're together in spirit with the congregation in St Andrews. We have a God who is amazingly good and generous. And this morning... Darling, I'm, I'm recording the service. Just wait for the congregation. They're all there. But David, I need the laptop to check some emails. Well, I'm, darling, waiting. I'm waiting for emails. You'll have to wait till later. I'm recording the service and I did pay for it anyway, so I'm going to take that. Okay, let me know when you finish. Okay, thanks, darling. As I was saying, we have a really good and generous God who shares. Oh, so, can I borrow your heart? No, you, you're burning far too much petrol. Um, you, you're going to be burning petrol again that I've paid for. No, you'll have to walk. That's his pony, mate. We have such a good and generous God who shares... Can I have the rest of this chocolate? No! I'm so hungry. It's mine and it's the last bit. Anyway, God is so good and generous. He shares so much with us and he calls us to be generous too, and to reflect his... Yes, David, God does call us to be generous, so please don't be so mean. Do you know, do you think Ash is maybe right that I shouldn't be so mean? God calls us to share, and I've just been a bit mean to my family, haven't I? Do you sometimes find that a bit hard as well, to share and to be generous? We tend to want to hold things for ourselves, don't we? Especially things that we've paid for or been given or whatever. Well, if that's the case, we need to say sorry to God and we need to try and put it right. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to lead us in a prayer of confession and you can join in the responses as we say sorry to God, especially thinking of the times when we've not been generous. Then we're going to join together in praising and thanking him and asking him to help us live as he wants to. And then I think maybe I need to go and put things right with my family. So as I lead in this confession, please join in the responses, Lord have mercy and Christ have mercy as they're repeated. Sovereign Lord and almighty God, in a dark and disfigured world, we have not held out the light of life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. In a hungry and despairing world, 
we have failed to share our bread. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. In a cold and loveless world, we have kept the love of God to ourselves. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Psalm 136 is a wonderful psalm and it has this repeated line, his love endures forever. It speaks of many of the things that God had done for his people Israel. And as they go through these things, after each one, they say, his love endures forever. So we're going to use that in speaking to God. We're going to say, your love endures forever. And as I speak of some of the things that he's done and some of the things that we want him to help us with, Maybe you could join in those words each time. Almighty God, we praise you because you are powerful, good and loving. Your love endures forever. You have created the universe and this world and made it good. Your love endures forever. You provide us with all good things for life. Your love endures forever. You sent your son Jesus so that we could be forgiven and we could know you. Your love endures forever. You promise that you are with us always through whatever we face in life. Your love endures forever. You promise us that if we trust in Jesus, we will live forever with you. Your love endures forever. Help us to listen to you today. Your love endures forever. Help us to trust and follow you always. Your love endures forever. Help us to love you and to love others and to be generous with all you give us. Your love endures forever. Amen. Now I need to go and make things right with my family. I'm taking this chocolate for them. I need to take the laptop for Ash. In the meantime, here's our first song. See you in a little while. we 
Father, Spirit, Son. We hear you calling, the light you roaring. The time is coming and it has come. Your word is moving, your river flowing. We praise you, Father. So as you can see, I'm with Al, kind of, um, and it's going to be very sad for us to say farewell to Al and Sarah and Connie and Reuben uh, very soon. Uh, Al, it's been so good to have you with us this last two and a bit years, um, and we'll kind of say farewell next week, but I wanted to just take a bit of time to chat about how things have been and uh, what you're going ahead to. Uh, yep. So, what have been some of your highlights of uh, being with us? Well, uh, I'm I'm glad you warned me about the question uh, <laughs> beforehand, <laughs> because there there have been uh, so many highlights, uh, and I think one of the things I've been most grateful for about doing my curacy here is the breadth of different things you know that yeah. I've been able to get involved with and, and share a little bit of responsibility for. Yeah. Uh, but I, I wrote down a few. I think f what one of them for me, one of the things I'll never ever forget uh, is the outrageous fun we had with Summer Mayhem last summer. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm so gutted that we didn't get to do it again uh, this year. Uh, just uh, seeing the joy of uh, you know kids coming alive in the joy of the Lord, loud worship, um, crazy mm -hmm. games. Uh, and some beautiful uh, tender moments looking at the Bible and praying together. And in general, you know, we're so blessed to have the kids work and the youth work we have here uh, uh, and leaders who care about them so much. And it was, you know, a, just a total joy to share in a little bit of that. Uh, I've I really treasured um, the times I've had with worship leaders here as well and seeing just lovely growth um in the musical gifting and the anointing uh, especially some of our young people just been a total joy yeah it's been very special for them as well very mm. but then I, I've, I could name like loads of other sort of personal hid more hidden you know pastoral things which will stay with me forever uh, and then you, you just you know just name all the all the amazing conversations uh, about jesus during alpha courses and uh wedding visits and baptism visits and uh, all in all i i have found curiosity to be such a gift you know i've right. got back way way more uh, than i've given out over these last two years or so well that's really good i mean we feel we've gained an enormous amount so uh, tell us about where you're going and what you're looking forward to yeah i'm going to be vicar of saint augustine's church in ipswich uh, which is uh, obviously a long way from here, uh, geographically speaking. Um, 
but I already said to a couple of people that it already feels close to our hearts. You know, we've been made to feel so welcome already, blown away by the welcome, uh, really. Um, it's a large, vibrant, charismatic church in town. It's a part of the HTB network. Mm -hmm. uh, so they love Alpha. Uh, they are serious about church planting. There's a couple of church plants in the works. So yeah, very, very exciting. That's great. That's great. And um, is there anything you'd like to say to us as you come to move on? I tell you what, um, I feel like the spirit saying to me and, and folks can weigh up whether they feel like it's, uh, whether he's saying the same thing to them. And it's, it's a question really, uh, it's quite a serious question, but it is what is, what does it mean to follow Jesus faithfully mm -hmm. right now? In, in, in these moments you know we know God's in charge we know that Jesus is still on the throne and yet our circumstances right now are not favorable to put it mildly towards being the church as we as we're used to it so the question for me is how 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 will we be faithful disciples of Jesus in this moment in this sort of scattered moment how how will we seek him and go after him with all we've got now and and will we be, will we choose to be those who burn brightly, you know, in this moment for the mm -hmm. sake of the, in the world, in this in-between in moment? And it seems to me that's the, that is the greatest gift we could give to the world in this season. Um, so what would you like us to be praying for you in these coming weeks? Yeah, thank you so much. And, and be, be encouraged that our prayers are being answered daily at the moment. You know, God seems to be smoothing the way for our move uh, um, it would be lovely if you would pray for a, an uncomplicated move mm. <laughs> finish finishing well here of course uh, the kids finishing school here and and so on pray for my um licensing service that's going to be on november the third mm -hmm. um in in ipswich sadly it's going to be a really kind of small affair as these things are at the moment uh but i i think the plan is to have a live stream uh, running so we'll circulate uh that's great so details for anyone can, can, yeah um and, pl and pray as well please for sarah and the kids as as we all start over again yeah absolutely <laughs> you know, in, a, in a new place and new yeah. schools and and the whole works you know it, yeah. it it's a lot it's a lot but um we believe we're going in obedience uh, yeah. and therefore we've got nothing to fear yeah yeah Okay, thank you so much, Al. Well, we'll do a little bit more next week as a kind of uh, wrap up and farewell, but that, that's great to be able to take the time to do that today. So thank you. Okay. We'll be saying farewell to Al next week. Uh, now here's Sheila Lindsay to lead us in our prayers this morning. This is the confidence that we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of him. So may we not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication and with thanksgiving, let our requests be made known to God. And then the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. So let us pray. Jeremiah 29 tells us to seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf, for in its welfare you will find your welfare. Father, we hear the coronavirus is rising again and we see what a huge hurdle it is for humanity in managing this crisis politically, economically and scientifically. Father, in our own community, in the UK and around the world, many are struggling to process the situation that the world finds itself in. So we pray now, especially for Wirral, with local restrictions being introduced in an effort to reduce the rate of COVID-19 infection in the borough. And we pray also for the health and well-being of our nation, that all who are fearful and anxious may know your peace. We pray for the isolated and the housebound, we pray for our children, schools, young people, doctors and nurses and scientists. 
We cry out to you, Father, for your mighty hand to slow down and stop the progress of this virus, for a decline in its spread, for a swift, safe vaccine, for economic stability and for healing. Father, we know that everything is under your sovereign control and that you are our refuge and our strength and ever-present help in times of trouble. Therefore, by your grace and mercy, we will not fear and we will trust in you. Father, we pray for Elizabeth, our Queen, that you would give her good health, strength and much grace. And for all those who govern, for our Prime Minister Boris Johnson, our government and parliament, gives them all wisdom, insight and concern for the common good. For only by your wisdom can they make decisions that are right and benefit the people of this country. And we pray for our political leaders and the, the challenging conversations and decisions they have to make around Brexit. Give them the wisdom they need, your wisdom, your favour, so that the outcome maintains the stability and peace that Europe has enjoyed for many years. And we pray for our clergy, Father, praying first for Mark Tanner, recently installed, installed as the new Bishop of Chester. May we, by your grace, seek to support and encourage him as he takes up his calling. And Father, we thank you that our Rector David is back, renewed and refreshed from his sabbatical. We thank you for this time of study and reflection for him and would ask that you would strengthen and uphold him as he leads and guides his flock. And we pray too, Father, for Al, as he prepares to take up his new position at St Augustine's Ipswich with Sarah, Connie and Reuben. Father, we are so grateful for this little family and all their love and friendship during their time with us at St Andrews. We are so grateful to you for Al's selfless giving ministry to us and his solid faithful teaching. Please pour your grace upon grace on the whole family in all their preparations. And we pray for Al that you would continue to uphold and guide him. Father, keep him in the centre of your will by your love and grace. And may, may all his thoughts and ways be guided by you alone, Father and fill him with the spirit of wisdom and knowledge in all the challenges he will face. And Father, bless our whole church team with faithfulness and a deep delight in your word. Father, there is nothing we have that you've not given us. All that we have and all that we are is because of you, bought with the precious blood of Jesus. To spend selfishly and to give without sacrifice is the way of the world. But generosity is the way of those who call Christ their Lord. So help us to increase in generosity until it can be said that there is no needy person among us. And help us to be generous because you, Father, are so generous to us. And so, Father, as we go into a new week in these very strange and uncertain times, we thank you that you promise strength for the weary and all sufficient grace in every circumstance of life. So may our hearts be so filled with love and thankfulness to you that worry and concern have no room there. And now in church and in our own homes, let's join our voices together in the words that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen now, here's a great song which speaks about God's love for us and our response to him. Oh, the mystery. Oh, the mystery. You crossed it. 
So here are Sam and Diane Hall with our reading and then Al will be coming to speak to us. This reading is taken from 1 Kings 17, paragraph 7 to 16. Some time later, the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. The word of the Lord came to him, Go at once to Zarephath in the region of Sidon and stay there. I have instructed the widow there to supply you with food. So he went to Zarephath. When he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, Would you bring me a little water in a jar so I may have a drink? As she was going to get it, he called, And bring me, please, a piece of bread. As surely as the Lord, your God lives, she replied. I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive olive oil in a jug. I am gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid, go home and do as you have said, but first make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me, and then make something for yourself and your son, for this is what the Lord the God of Israel says, the jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the land. She went away and did as Elijah had told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and the woman and her family. But the jar of flour was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry. In keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, I imagine my title for today hasn't exactly given you goosebumps. Two Widows, Part One. Uh, hardly the stuff of viral uh, YouTube clips and Facebook posts is it but I've chosen it and I'm sticking with it uh, because it's factual. Uh, today and next Sunday I'm going to be talking about two different widows in the Bible, one from the Old Testament, uh, one from the New, one from uh, 2000 years ago around about the time of Jesus 
and one from probably a thousand years before that. And I want us to think about why these two stories of widows were preserved for us uh, to find and to pour over and to talk about and preach about all these years later. What was so special about their stories and what might they have to say to us, to you and to me today? First of all, why widows at all. Well, widows are more important in the Bible story than you probably realise. It seems that they have a, a special place in God's heart uh, and it seems that he loves to use widows. In fact, whenever a widow shows up in the Bible, it's a pretty good sign that something extraordinary is about to happen. Think of Naomi and Ruth. Uh, two widows, of course, who illustrate the, the power of redemption and the loving kindness of God. Naomi and Ruth, two totally vulnerable women in their society, victims of the worst kind of misfortune to befall a woman in those days, which was to lose her husband. To lose a, a husband was to lose, of course, your financial security, but it was also to lose your status, your whole place in the world. Uh, women in those days were already much more on the edges of things uh, than they are today. But when they lost their husband, they were seen to mean and to matter even less to society. Uh, the, um, the root of the Hebrew word for widow, in fact, is a word which means unable to speak. Widows had no voice in that society. They had no agency, uh, no power at all. So it, it's no wonder that uh, Naomi tells people not to call her Naomi anymore, which means sweet, but to call her Mara, uh, which means bitter, because she'd been dealt the bitterest blow uh, for a woman in that society. But if you if you know the story of Naomi and Ruth, you know that it, they were used powerfully by God. Uh, he showed up powerfully for them, both of them vulnerable, their situation so precarious. And yet God works a mighty, mighty miracle for them. Boaz, of course, redeems them and both of them are then abundantly provided for. And God's purposes are advanced in a completely amazing way. Ruth, we learn, is the great grandmother of King David, which makes her an ancestor of Jesus himself. How amazing is that? So widows are women right on the edge of things, women who find themselves with no choice but to trust in God. Uh, if God doesn't show up for them, they are goners. And that makes them just his cup of tea. You know, the Lord can't resist uh, that kind of trust and dependence. He loves to show himself to be powerful to those people who realise they have no power of their own. So over the next two weeks, we're going to look at two amazing passages, not Naomi and Ruth, but two other widows, two widows, two powerless women who respond to God in such a way that brings him great pleasure and unlocks his favour on their life. And the widow I want us to look at this week is the widow we call the widow of Zarephath. Uh, that's how we know her. And her story is told uh, in 1 Kings chapter 17. We've already heard it read. Now, this is an Elijah story. So miracles are pretty much on the cards, but not necessarily for this widow. At least it seems to me it all comes down to how she responds to Elijah and what he asks of her. So let's talk about the story. It starts in uh, verse eight, our story today, with the word of the Lord came to Elijah. Elijah was a prophet and prophets in the Old Testament were the ones who received the word of the Lord, uh, who received his instruction and communications on behalf of others from the Lord, from Yahweh. And prophets, when they were doing their job properly, communicate the word of the Lord obediently, as if God himself were saying it. So God tells Elijah to go to Zarephath in the middle of a famine and to go probably to the poorest, most unfortunate person there and to ask her to provide for him. 
What does that mean to provide for him? Well, if we look back a few verses, we see that God himself was actually providing for Elijah up to this point. Uh, ravens were bringing him food. I told you to expect miracles. Uh, and he was getting water from um, from a wadi, from a valley stream, which was unreliable at the best of times. But now uh, the passage tells us it had dried up completely due to the famine. So why does he send Elijah to a widow of all people? Well, there's a word that's actually missing uh, from our NIV that might give us a clue as to why. Other translations have look or behold, I have commanded a widow there to feed you in verse nine. I guess the Lord wants Elijah to see something. Uh, he wants to show him something and he wants to show us something too. So Elijah meets the widow uh, right at the edge of town. She's gathering firewood and uh, he brings the word of the Lord to her by asking her to provide for him, to provide for him something to eat and something to drink. I wonder if by now he's starting to get an inkling uh, that this is going to mean another miracle, different kind of miracle, uh, but just as much of a miracle as food coming from ravens from the sky and water coming from a dried up valley. And how does she answer him? Well, look, look at her words. As surely as the Lord your God lives, she says, I don't have any bread. Verse 12. What's she saying to him here? As surely as the Lord your God lives? Well, for starters, she's making it clear that he's not her God. And uh, it doesn't sound like a statement of faith to me. It sounds more like uh, an insult. It sounds like she's spitting Elijah's request back in his face. After all, if she's really down to her uh, very last meal, what has she got to lose? There's, there's really nothing worse than being a widow in the society, apart from being a starving widow in the middle of a famine. Uh, in this society. So she thinks she's a goner. She assumes it's all over for her. But Elijah doesn't back off. He doesn't take her word as final. He's carrying the word of the Lord and he's a prophet and he's going to prophesy. So he says, don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said. But first, make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me and then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, the jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day of the Lord sends rain on the land. Well, I think Elijah gets right to the heart of the issue here with the very first thing he says, don't be afraid. Verse 13, this widow has a, a, a real and pressing problem. She is a powerless woman in the middle of a famine. The future looks extremely bleak, but Elijah sees what God sees. He sees that her primary problem is not a lack of resources. It's basic fear. What's driving her behaviour in preparing for the worst and throwing insults at the prophet of God, what's behind all of that? is fear. And Elijah confronts her fear with the word of God. And he does that the way messengers do that throughout the Bible, actually, with three or four little words. Don't be afraid. Do not be afraid. God says it to Moses. Do not be afraid. He says it to Joshua and Gideon. Do not be afraid. Um, he says it to the people of Israel uh, in Isaiah. Don't be afraid. Remember, uh, the angel comes to to Mary, the Virgin Mary, and says, before anything else, do not be afraid. And Jesus says to his disciples on several occasions, do not be afraid. The Lord is about to ask something of this woman that puts her in amazing company, to take a step of faith into the unknown, to, to give what little that she has to offer and to place it in his hands and trust that he's going to do something remarkable. But how gracious is he that even before he asks that of her, he calms her with those words, do not be afraid. And only then does he invite this widow to repent, to have another go, think a better thought and let the word of the Lord 
dictate her next actions, not her circumstances, uh, not her feelings, not her fear, but the word of the Lord. And then this widow, this powerless victim of circumstances way beyond her control, earns her place in the great story of faith because well you know what happens next when she does what Elijah tells her to do her flower never runs out her oil jug never runs dry a mighty miracle of God takes place right before her eyes now how about for us what can we learn uh, from this moment for our moment for September 2020, the start of a second wave of the coronavirus and a second wave of uh, uncertainty and frustration uh, and even despair. Where are you in this story? I know where I am. Uh, I'm the widow. I feel powerless right now in the face of these circumstances. And on a bad day after spending too much time on social media or listening to too many news reports, I feel fearful about how things are going to turn out. In, in my own way, I sometimes would just rather gather up a few sticks and go home, turn inwards, uh, look after my own affairs, look after my own family, curse my bad luck and and uh, lash out at a politician who's trying to tell me what to do. I might certainly feel like this is exactly the wrong time for my church to be talking about giving in the middle of a pandemic when people's jobs are possibly under threat, pension funds and savings have been hit and we just don't know how things are going to turn out. But then the word of the Lord comes to me and he says, don't be afraid. Jesus himself comes to me and says, take courage, literally take courage, take my courage. I have a gift of courage for you. Take it from me. Then he says, once my fear is abated, because I know the Lord is with me. And when the Lord is with me, there is nothing left to fear. He says, give me what you have. Give it to me. Give me that little bit of flour, that little bit of oil. Give me that those few loaves, that little bit of fish. Don't close your hand tightly around them, but open it up. Open up to the reality that you are powerless, Al, right now. And instead, come to me in trust and dependence, let go of your fear uh, and let go of what you feel you most need to cling on to right now. Let it go and watch what I'm going to do with it. You see, empty, powerless people like this widow are just God's cup of tea <laughs> because when we are weak, he's strong. The less of me there is, the more of him there is. So don't miss out on a miracle of God by holding tightly to what you have now. Open up your hands and receive what the Lord wants to give you, the freedom and the fullness that we find in taking God at his word. We're going to talk about another widow in the Bible next week, and I hope you will join me for what will be my final sermon here at St. Andrews. And let's just pray as we close. Father God, may we, like this widow, let the word of the Lord dictate how we act right now. Not our circumstances, not our fear. There's plenty that we could all be anxious about at the moment. But when the word of the Lord comes to us, help us to receive it and obey you with faith. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Al. We're going to join together in response to affirm our faith in God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, and our trust in him, which is not just in our heads, but in our hearts and in our lives. Please join with me in the responses on the screen. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life? the one for whom we exist. We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. 
Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. We've been thinking about our giving to God today and I want to lead us in a prayer, recognising that many of us uh, taking part in this service have given financially and in other ways to God's work through St Andrews. Uh, many of you have done that through your bank account or by sending funds into us and we're really grateful. Now let's commit our lives and our gifts to him now. God of all goodness and grace, receive the gifts we offer and grant that our whole life may give you glory and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If you do want to start giving to St Andrew's Church and to our work, we'd be really grateful for that, of course, uh, one-off gift or regular giving, uh, please do contact the church office and we can help you make arrangements for that. I'd also like to invite you to take part in an online Alpha group. Alpha is a great opportunity to find out more about the claims of Jesus Christ, who he is, the difference he can make to your life, and opportunities to ask questions, to explore in an informal setting. Uh, we're going to be running that online soon. We haven't yet fixed the day and time because we want to try and uh, include anybody who wants to be a part of that. If you would like to be invited to that group, then please email the office uh, or phone us and let us know and we'd be delighted to include you in that. Here's a trailer that tells you a little bit more, just gives you a taster of what's involved on Alpha. Welcome to Alpha. So again, please do contact the church office if you would like to be invited to take part. If you're on our email list, then you will be regularly receiving our news and notices and information about what we're doing. If you're not on that but would like to be, again, please contact the church office and we can make sure that you receive those emails each week and you know what's going on. And now our final song today is one expressing our commitment to God in every area of life. I surrender all. Trust. 
Jesus, my surrender, make me Savior, holy thine. Let me feel the Holy Spirit, truly know that thou art mine. to the end of our time together today uh, let me just close in prayer heavenly father we thank you for the opportunity to meet with you and we pray that you would help us to grow in relationship with you and with one another and in living that out we pray that you would give us generous hearts and as we go about our daily lives this week help us to keep our eyes open for opportunities to share your generosity and to help others. In Jesus' name, Amen. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you now and always. Amen. I hope you've enjoyed your time with us this morning, whether you've been here for the first time or as a visitor or a regular member of St Andrew's congregation, whether you're local here in Bebbington or you're joining us from much further away. It's great to have you with us. If we can help or support you in any way, please do get in contact with the church office. We would love to do that. Uh, we know these are difficult times for many and we want to be there with the hope and the love of Jesus Christ in these times. Do look out for other things that we're doing. We'd love to see you again. God bless you.